Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our recap of Pyanodons on Twitch. So, it has been already another stream, and... Oh, that's perfect timing. <laughs> it has already been another stream, and I think last time we said that we would be working our way over into Intermetallics and more of the ore processing. Last time around, I think we have showed off the iron processing over here, which is now running fine. We did have a bit more of a stone sink, or at least stone is being used up more in the base. So the iron processing over here is running fine. I think I should place the splitter over there to balance out the left lane and the right lane over there, so that this one over here can work a bit more. I might just do that after I did the recording over here, just so that we can move over here real quick and get this done. But yes, we're currently in the middle of upgrading all of our ore processing wherever we can and that is a pretty nice thing to do let me just get to my car real quick and let me just show you some of the things we have did on stream now one of the things we did and that is probably a thing you want to do as soon as you reach this stage as well is upgrade your glass processing currently we are running or previously we were running glass processing by just taking in the quartz ore directly and smelting it up but as soon as you have access to jaw crushers, oops, <laughs> there we go, let's park it over here. As soon as you have access to jaw crushers, you might want to upgrade your input lane over here uh, of your quartz ore and, your, and use the crush quartz. Because crushed quartz over here is easy to make. The jaw crusher is pretty fast to find it. It takes in five quartz ore per second and it crushes it into one crushed quartz per second and you get a little bit of stone out of it that stone over here we just send it back over here into our main stone line and the crushed quartz over here it is definitely a significant upgrade to use crushed quartz compared to normal quartz let's let's compare the both of them uh where's that thing so we could either make molten glass straight out of quartz or you could either make 10 molten glass out of six quartz ore or you make 30 molten glass out of two crushed quartz. Now, crushed quartz over here, as we said, it's five quartz ore per crushed quartz, which means we will need 10 quartz ore to make 30 molten glass over here, which is a significant upgrade if you compare it to the six over here to make 10. Uh, technically, if you'd use bad mathematics, um, it would mean we need 12 to make 20. This over here makes um, requires 10 to make 30. So it is a significant upgrade. Good, 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 good. We're also running on Syngas over here now. Mostly because Syngas is starting to back up everywhere. And, well, we just have to use it. <laughs> Not quite sure how good the gasoline and the aromatic storage over here is. Uh, it's it's piling up. We will probably have to do something with that soon. But that will be a problem for future Bolt. Let me just get out of here real quick. And let me show you what we have done over here in the western parts of the base. We have... Kind of made some expansions over here, and we're going to go through all of them because it's going to be important. Um, this will probably be also the recap episode for two streams. Mostly because, well, when we play this game on stream, we're not really that efficient about it. Mostly because, well, chat is just bloody amazing. I just love chatting with everybody on Twitch chat. Uh, and we don't really end up building much. Good, but one step at a time. Let's go down here first. So, one of the big things we're going to need at some point in time is antimony processing. That is exactly what we're doing over here. Now, we can already see over here that we have a misbuilt. Uh, the ratio over here is off. I actually do need more of these automated screeners, but that's an issue for the future. But we are doing the antimony mining over here. The antimony itself runs on canisters, which is a bit annoying. These miners over here will require you to set up a canister loop. And what we ended up doing is we just put down um, a barreling machine in front of each of these antimony drills. And the only thing we do is we loop two canisters. There's always one canister inside of the machine being used. Once it's being used up, uh, we will get an empty fuel canister. The empty fuel canister then goes back over into this machine, where it will be filled up again with aromatics, and then it goes back into the machine over here. So we only need two canisters, and we just make a closed loop like this. And it should be fine. We should actually maybe be able to see this thing over here switch over. Uh, let's just give it a second. And then you will see exactly what's going on over here. So whenever we use up one of these canisters, uh, we will get an empty canister back. So once he does this, let me just move up down here a little bit. Oops. Oh, there we go. Then we can see both. Empty canister goes over here. It goes to this machine. will get filled up again and goes back. And then we do the switcheroo. Now, the canisters, that's a little bit confusing. All of the canisters 
Where are they? Are they not near? No, it's with one N. It's only with two N. Canister. Yeah, all of the canisters all have the same fuel value. Each canister has a fuel value of 10 megajoules, but they do... Uh, they are made up of liquids of different energy. For example, a gasoline canister over here. Gasoline, as you do know, has a um, megajoule value of 1.2, I think. If we take a look at this recipe over here, you will notice that we only need nine gasoline to make one canister. If we compare that to um, canisters, the aromatic canister that we use over here, uh, we will need 29 aromatics to make one aromatics canister. So it adds up. The, the, math, the, the math over here is correct. Uh, each one of these canisters holds the exact amount of fuel that you need to put into one of these canisters to burn it off, which is, if you think about it, actually a very nice way of, of doing this. Uh, this allows you to burn your fuels in a more physical form. And we don't need liquid burners for everything, which actually means we could maybe think about... Uh, let me just set this up real quick. Let me just check this one. Do you eat canisters as well? No. Dang. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that you would eat canisters, but that is not the case. Yeah, but, but this at least allows us to use liquid fuel in a physical form, which is pretty darn good. You can also see that we have put down fast food forestries around this thing over here, mostly because we are in the desert, and because we're in the desert, pollution will be an issue. Um, and these fast food forestries over here help us out tremendously in keeping the pollution at bay. Now, of course, over here, we got a bit of a miscalculation. We need, I think, a couple more of these. Each one of these consumes one antimony grade two per second. And you over there, you make three every five. And you over there, you make two every five. So we make 13 every five, uh, which means we make about three per second. And over here, we oh, yeah we need two more of these we need two more of these to consume the antimony over here but that's fine that's fine all of it and the antimony process is pretty straightforward uh, you dig up the raw ore over here you screen it once you get antimony grade one you get antimony grade two you get some stone you get some iron oxide the antimony grade one gets crushed into antimony grades two and we get some more stone out of that the antimony grade two gets crushed or sorted into antimony grade 3 and antimony grade 4 and some gravel. Um, the antimony grade 3 will be crushed again into antimony grade 4. And this one has no byproduct. And then everything goes up over here onto these belts. We've got one belt of stone, one belt of gravel, one belt of antimony, and one belt of iron oxide. Um, the stone and the gravel currently are being used over here to make landfill. And, well, we're not making a lot of landfill, but one step at a time. Um, it is our only source of landfill, and this is also the only uh, recipe for landfill that you will get. And it is kind of expensive. You need 50 stone and 50 gravel and 50 soil to make one piece of landfill. And that's the only recipe that exists. Which means, yeah, this is already a lot of stone and a lot of gravel. We mainly use this to sink stone and gravel that's being made as byproducts over here by the ore processing. Uh, and, well, we are still far, far, far off from filling up or landfilling the ocean over here. But we might have enough to make, like, a little bridge from over there to over there. But still, if we do want to do that, and let's just go best case scenario over here and best case scenario over there. Let's go over here. We would still need about, yeah, 200, no, more than that. We need 400 landfill. <laughs> Give or take a little. We might be able to sneak through here a little bit better. But if we want to make a bridge from over there to all the way over there, we will need 400 landfill for a single row, um, which also means a single belt. If we want to make a train line, we will need double that. Um, yeah, we will get there at some point in time. At some point in time, we will get there. Good. But what do we do with the antimony grade 4? Well, the antimony grade 4 goes over here into the basic oxygen furnace. Uh, but we require some plastic, some oxygen, uh, and some antimony grade 4 to make the antimony oxide over here. Now, oxygen is a bit of an issue. Uh, it used to be that oxygen in the previous pa uh, um, patch of uh, pyanodons was pretty easy to make. You just take an electrolyzer, um, you add some water, and you turn that into oxygen and hydrogen, which we still do. That's still the way we do it. However, there's one significant change to this whole thing, um, and that is the power usage. Look over here. It eats up 10 megawatts of power. 
And that is quite often. And electrolysis is a thing that we are going to have um, quite a lot in the future because uh, oxygen is a thing we need a lot of, hydrogen is a thing we need a lot of, and later on, um, chlorine gas and hydrogen is also a thing we need a lot of. So it's going to be interesting how these over here scale out. Our power consumption at the moment is still fine-ish, um, but if we escalate this over here, we will need a lot more of these. Now, this one over here only makes 10 oxygen per second, and the amount of oxygen that we need, would these be running at full speed, is 10 oxygen per second. So currently over here, we're fine. But there are way more recipes out there, especially for iron processing, that do require... Wait a minute, let me just have a look where it is. Uh, that do require oxygen. And let's maybe just go over to the basic iron processing. Where's basic iron processing? There we go. Uh, usage. And then we go down disc rate, disc rate, uh, disc rate, disc rate. No, I'm going too deep. We want to go into... Molten iron, there we go. Actually, this is really the correct recipe. Yeah. Unslammed iron and oxygen into molten iron, or in general, every kind of molten recipe over here does require an oxygen furnace, which means we need to add oxygen to our process iron to make the molten iron. And I think that is also, if we want to go into steel, mm, where is steel? Should be in here. There we go. Yeah, steel over here requires a lot of oxygen, like a lot of it. That's going to be very expensive to make in the future. But this is a very good recipe. This is more or less a one-to-one -one conversion from molten iron to molten steel, which is pretty darn good. Um, but that is a thing for the future. Also, are there... Oh, that's for the stainless steel recipe, I see. Good, 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 good. What's the time save? The time says we're still good. Um, what else do we have over here? Uh, yeah, that is all fine. Which means we can now go over to where we use the antimony. Now, one thing, of course, we have to keep in mind. Is it already over here? Um, yeah, it is over here. We do need to get the plastic from over here. Now, how does one make plastic? Making plastic in pyanodons is not too complicated, if you think about it. It's just syngas and aromatics. Now, we already have, if we go over here, we already have this place over here, which makes quite a lot of aromatics. Uh, but not a lot of syngas. And then we have this little recycler in front of it, which turns the coal gas that we make over here into syngas. The problem with the coal gas over here is that the coal gas over here is mostly being used over here in the miner for the aluminum, which means we don't really make any syngas over here. That means we kind of need something like a syngas making machine, and that is the other thing we made on that stream which is turning raw coal into syngas. And that is all the way over here. Uh, let me just get over there. Let me get over there. Let me get over there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Not this one. Ignore this one. We made this in another stream. <laughs> Nothing to see over here. <laughs> that will be in the next video. Uh, there we go. That is this thing. Ooh, it's kind of dark over here. Let me just put some lamps over here real quick. Um, boop. Boop. There we go. Oh, I got reach. Perfect. Um... A lamp over here and the lamp over there. There we go. Now we can see. So, um, one of the recipes, and I kind of ridiculed this recipe for a long time, but it's actually not too bad, is uh, the whole raw coal into coal gas recipe. And this one is pretty darn good. We got the raw coal, a raw coal field over here, uh, which we then over here turn into coal, coal gas, and tar. Now, we don't, this one over here, for me, it didn't really make a lot of sense at the beginning. Because the raw coal into coal is very inefficient, in my opinion. It's like 10 pieces of raw coal into 3 pieces of coal. If we would use the crushing mechanics, we would turn those 10 into 6 pieces of coal and 3 pieces of, um, what's it called again, crushed coal. And a bit of coal dust, stuff like that. But then we would miss out on the coal gas and on the tar. And the coal gas and the tar are the two important things that we make over here. This over here is basically a tar plant and a syngas plant. So what we do over here is the raw coal gets turned into, uh, into coal. And then in the next step over here, we take that coal and we turn that into coke. And in this process, yet again, we take coal gas out of it and tar out of it. And, and also as a byproduct, we make a, a little bit more of iron oxide. And then, and I never thought I would ever use this recipe because the last recipe over here is very, very, very terrible. This is 20 coke 
into 20 coal gas and 20 tar. Usually 20 coke, you want to use that for power or something like that. But in this case, I kind of wanted this machine over here to run non-stop and not be stopped by backing up on coke and anything like that. So this little pyramid over here of coal processing is turning all of this raw coal over here into coal gas and tar. And we do need that. The tar over here, well, the tar is not even backing up because we're using it up quite extensively. Uh, and the sin gas over here is completely backed up because all of the coal gas or all of the possible coal gas that we make over here, we turn into sin gas. And not only sin gas, we also turn that into more tar. So this is actually a pretty neat setup. This is a really, really nice little setup to turn like um, like one field of raw coal into tar and sin gas, which you do need later on in the game quite a lot. Also, of course, this place over here has been surrounded yet again by forestries to keep the pollution in check. Now, with the sin gas and the aromatics coming from a far, 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 far away belt, Actually, no, we're not. We are not getting the aromatics from a far away belt. We're getting the aromatics straight from over here. I might switch this up. I might pull over the aromatics pipeline, which currently actually is going all the way over here. And we are backing up on aromatics over there. Yeah, I think I will do that. Uh, but either way, at the moment over here, we are turning the tar over here into aromatics. Um, and then using the syngas and the aromatics to turn that into plastic. But we should maybe only do this over here if we run out of aromatics over here. And then we have more tar for this little project over here, which we'll be talking about in the next video. Good. So that will be the recap from our stream. And I think that is fine. I think that is fine. Perfect. Nevertheless, thank you so much for today. If you do want to see more of this, please do check me out on twitch.tv slash boltvanking. And for everything else, you can always watch more on the YouTube channel where we do even more um, space exploration and Crestoria 2 as well as... Actually, we don't really do much else on the YouTube channel at the moment. I do have some plans to do some other stuff on the YouTube channel soon. Uh, currently, well, work is occupying way too much time, so I don't really have time for that. Uh, but there will be a big Christmas break coming soon. And then we can maybe do something else. Nevertheless, thank you so much for today. If you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a comment, a subscription. Every one of those actions does help me out in growing this YouTube channel into something bloody amazing. Nevertheless, without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening. And until next time, see you around!